today is a deathmatch showdown between the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 and the EK AIO 360. We previously reviewed the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 280 pretty positively. We saw that it was the new chart leader for thermal performance in a number of cases. But then the EK AIO 360 came out and that one took over in the ranks in a couple of charts, which led to Arctic emailing us and saying, well, it looks like we've been dethroned. And we asked if they wanted to try again, 360 to 360. And so we're back. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermals significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. So as stated, we already have the 280 review up. If you want the full details on the whole build quality aspect of it, assembly, stuff like that, check out the 280 review for everything relating to those items, to the non-thermal performance. Today we're focusing mostly on thermal and acoustic performance, the surface flatness of the cold plate, stuff like that, because we've already outlined the assembly process, installation, build quality, and that hasn't changed here. It doesn't change just because the radiator size does. A couple quick notes, the Arctic tank is thicker on average than tanks from say the NZXT X62. So that does start to lend it a bit of an advantage in addition to some of the other advantages we've discussed, like in our teardown of the cooler. And we also already previously talked about some of the installation difficulties, which we'll show that on the screen as well from last time. But the main problem was that with specifically AMD, this doesn't apply to Arctic's Intel uh, mounting kit, with AMD, it does require three hands or some tape on the back of the mounting plate of the uh, the back plate for the motherboard makes it easier or installing it on a table but then it might not always work that way for case installation so the problem was just that there's no retention screw cap screw or anything to to hold the back plate in place arctic actually commented on our liquid freezer 2 280 review and said that it was aware of this issue acknowledged it and said it's working on an improvement so that's good to see but it hasn't been rolled out just yet uh, that's something that can be worked around though. The thermal performance is what we really need to focus on today. And then we also have a couple of notes about logistics where this unit, it is a sample re we requested as media. It's our understanding that this was a retail sample, uh, but it was missing mounting hardware. Fortunately, we already have liquid freezers, so we could use the mounting hardware from one of those. But the reason we bring this up is because in our original review, we saw a couple of people comment and say that they had purchased the liquid freezer before we got around to reviewing it, and they also didn't have mounting hardware. Now, in most of those cases, we saw the users who commented say that Arctic did supply it when requested, so it should be as simple as emailing the support department, uh, and that goes the same for our store too. Like, if you ever buy something and something's missing from the order, obviously just email, and most companies are happy to help you out with it. But it's something that shouldn't happen, so we don't know if that's been completely resolved or if it was a small logistics issue. Uh, definitely wanted to point it out though because it happened to us with this one. So uh, let's get into the thermal testing and then we'll talk about some additional methodology notes at the end and conclusions of the Liquid Freezer 2 360. Our thermal charts will start with the 200 watt heat load as produced by the 3950X measured with all coolers set to a 35 dBA noise level at 20 inches of distance and with a noise floor of 26 dB. Remember again that we don't standardize the fans here. Each cooler is using its own included fans and all we've done is set the noise level equal between all of the coolers when tested in equal conditions. The point of this is to make it so that we've eliminated the last variable. So a cooler can't simply brute force its way to the top of the charts and win just by being the loudest. Here's the chart. The liquid freezer reclaims its spot at the top. Previously, the liquid freezer 2 to 80 became the chart leader for noise normalized performance, leading the Kraken series and the EVGA CLC 360, the latter of which suffers from weak static pressure when its noisy fans are reduced in RPM. This changed when the EK AIO 360 came out, surpassing the Liquid Freezer 2, 280 that is, by an amount that's basically error. But it's still technically plotted ahead. It held a one degree advantage versus Arctic's short-lived chart leader. That was against the 280 mil CLC Liquid Freezer though. And in spite of its wider radiator body, the Liquid Freezer still had a shorter radiator to work with. The Arctic 360 cooler just barely pulled ahead of the EK AIO 360, plotting at about 51 degrees Celsius over ambient for noise normalized thermals. This is error at this point, so it's more appropriate to say that the two are equivalent. 
Across four test passes for the Liquid Freezer 360, we had a total run-to-run -run range of 0.7 degrees Celsius. Some were lower than this, some were higher, but the average gets us to rough equivalents. In other words, if we re-ran each of these coolers a few times, you could easily shuffle which one's in the lead because they're that close. It's advantaged in VRM thermals, the Liquid Freezer 2 that is, but that's something we'll look at next. Overall, both EK and Arctic are firm chart leaders for noise normalized thermals, and neither has the standard Asetek copy-paste design that so many other coolers on the market have. Compared to air coolers, the best competitors are the NHD15 and the CNPS20X, both of which plot at about 58 degrees over ambient load temperature. A 7 to 8 degree drop is significant, particularly for anyone trying to overclock while keeping temperature controlled, but there are still advantages to air. Noise normalized thermal performance, however, is not one of them. A quick methodology note, we noticed a comment on the written version of the Liquid Freezer 2 review last time, and the comment said, I can't understand why you test coolers at 35 dBA, and they said that's insanely loud. Nobody is going to use things uh, that loud anyway. That's louder than a Dark Rock 4 at full throttle, full throttle, and it's unbearably loud, blah, 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 loud, loud, loud. So a couple things. That's not how noise works, <laughs> number one. Uh, when we talk about noise normalized performance in this review, everything else, you need to look at it in the context of this review. So noise is not just like a universal constant. It's, it's not like a fire strike score where it's going to be the same every time because the, the decibel level you're getting, the volume, is contingent upon the test environment and the distance from, which the, from the product at which the meter is placed. So we test at 20 inch distance for all the units. All that really matters is the relative comparison one to the next. And this comes down to a problem of uh, consumers not understanding how to use reviews properly. So when you're talking about, for example, Dark Rock 4, uh, actually it's about exactly the same in our testing. So no, uh, it, is not, it is not the louder than the Dark Rock 4 at full throttle. They're about the same in our testing, in our test environment. But when people are talking about this, they're probably looking at the number on the box. Each of these coolers might even have one. So for example, when a cooler uh, presents a noise level in its marketing materials, it was probably taken in an anechoic chamber. We're testing with a noise floor of 26. That's pretty damn quiet as far as like residential or office uh, locations are concerned, but it's not an anechoic chamber. So again, the, the real point is to compare based on the review. Intra review or intra review outlet, you can make comparisons, but comparing manufacturer anechoic specs to a review, it's it's not even that one is right and one's wrong. It's that you can't do that. That's not how noise works or the testing thereof. So anyway, I wanted to point that out because the, the replies to it too, some of them were like even trying to say the opposite that uh, 35 dB, I have to wonder why they've gone so low. Like once again, that's not how it works. So hopefully that helps kind of illustrate that Noise is more than just a number. It's a number taken at a distance in an environment. VRM thermal testing will be next. We have a couple of reminders for this. First of all, our VRM thermal performance testing is only representative, for liquid coolers that is, of a setup where the liquid cooler is top mounted. And a front mount for a case, the radiator and the fans will be mounted further from the VRM. And so airflow will be less direct. This means that liquid coolers will have an advantage over air coolers in these results because they're mounted with the radiator adjacent to the VRM, just like the top mount. First, a recap of the Arctic cooler specifically. Last time we produced this set of images showing the linear feet per minute flow at various points flanking the tiny VRM fan that's included on the Liquid Freezer 2 series. This illustrated that air was actually flowing towards the inductor line as a result of the VRM fan. And so it actually does do something. We won't go back through all of that again today, but we showed in the original Liquid Freezer 2 280 review that the fan reduced temperature regardless of whether the radiator was mounted with an air shot of the VRM or not. It does work. So although this is partially a gimmick in that the extra cooling doesn't necessarily do anything for you, it does actually technically affect change. This would be mostly useful with weaker VRM setups on worse motherboards or in scenarios of more extreme overclocking on air. If you're trying to resurrect an old X370 board with a weaker VRM and use it with a 3000 series high core count CPU, this might be a scenario where it makes more sense. That said, you'll probably run into a T-die limit for heavier overclocks before a MOSFET thermal limit, but at least it does something in a technical sense. On to the new VRM thermal comparison chart. 
The Liquid Freezer 2 to 80 that we tested previously plotted at 34.7 degrees for VRM MOS 0, whereas disabling its VRM fan produced a 4 degree increase in VRM MOS 0 thermals. The other MOSFETs also saw an increase in temperature. The 360 cooler has the benefit of more fans adjacent to the heatsink, and so it ends up the new chart leader, for Arctic that is, with regards to VRM thermal performance when top mounted. The EKAIO 240 and 360 run in the 40s, just behind both liquid freezer units, and this means that Arctic ends up with a technical victory. But we really do want to stress that this is a technicality. A couple degrees on a MOSFET doesn't really change much, unless you're already on dangerous territory with an ill-suited motherboard for the job. It is a victory nonetheless, but again, not one that should really tip the decision one way or the other for most people. The time required to reach steady state shows a major difference between air and liquid coolers, and it's mostly that liquid coolers have the capacity to soak short-term thermal changes better than air coolers do. Either way, the Liquid Freezer 2 360 ends up about the same as the EKAIO 360. There's no real difference between the two, with both at about 350 to 360 seconds. So these are where we'd expect for larger air coolers, and ultimately the Arctic solution does have another technical victory here. The next test is fully unlocked, so everyone's fans are set to 100% speed. This means that we're no longer controlling for the variable of noise. So some coolers, like the EVGA CLC360 at the top of the chart, can brute force their way into a lead with 60 dBA noise levels. It's deafening at that point. The Liquid Freezer 2 to 80 measured at 51 degrees Celsius over ambient, and we need to reiterate that this cooler ends up in the middle of the pack because it maxes out at 42.5 dBA, but it still manages a major efficiency lead over the NZXT Kraken X62 at 51.5 dBA and over the EKAIO 240 at 46.6 dBA. The Liquid Freezer 2 360 has less peak performance potential than the deafening CLC 360 from EVGA or the more reasonable but still louder EKAIO 360. The EKAIO leads by about 2 degrees here in exchange for its higher noise levels, while the CLC 360 shows its poor efficiency at only 1 degree better than that. In this chart, between EK and Arctic, a technical victory goes to EK's AIO 360 for having higher peak performance capabilities when noise is ignored. Our next test looks at surface flatness, a unique test that we conduct in our CPU cooler reviews to determine the consistency of the finish on cold plates. This helps establish the contact patch and how much the cooler will have to rely on interfaces to fill gaps. Some coolers have less microscopic gaps than others like the Corsair A500 air cooler, which remains on this chart as a baseline reference for something that's bad. These box and whisker plots show quartile representations against a couple dozen measurement points, each measured as a distance in microns from a known zero point. So it's a delta depth in microns against baseline zero. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 to 80 previously averaged around 10 microns of depth with a tight grouping around that mark. That consistency is what's most important here. It had one spike to about 48 microns, with the floor at about 2 microns. The 360 version is overall highly consistent with the 280 results, so it seems as if, at least between these two units across two very distant months apart manufacturing runs, Arctic has consistent cold plate flatness, from what we can see so far anyway. The EKAIO had a more consistently flat cold plate between its two units tested, especially the 240, but both Arctic and EK have done well here. All of that stated, a few things to, to sort of point out here. First of all, pricing, the Liquid Freezer 2 280 was around $95 when we first reviewed it. It has been perpetually out of stock since that point, but it's our understanding that Arctic, according to conversations with them, is getting a lot more units in stock over the next, well, weeks. It should be pretty much uh, constantly being restocked at this point. So maybe that issue will be resolved. At time of filming this review, the 360 is not in stock on the usual suspects in the US at least. So can't speak to the to all the regions, but it is not in stock here, which does obviously limit how far the recommendation on a purchase would go since you can't buy it unless you wait. But it should be getting back into stock the same time as the 280s. So price on the 360 is supposed to be $110. The Arctic coolers for the Liquid Freezer 2 series are specifically stripped of RGB LEDs. They lack a few other small features. For example, you can see we've got extension cables hooked up here to the fans. These fans can plug straight into the pump block, well, housing more or less, and uh, they plug in at the end of the radiator and then that cable runs down 
the sleeved tube, so it is cable managed and hidden. That goes down to the pump housing. But we attach the, the extension cables because for testing, we always run it straight off the motherboard for control reasons. You may want to do that too if you don't want to simplify things into the block because you have more individual control if you do plug them into the motherboard. If that's the case, you'll need to buy some extension cables. It's something we talked about in the original review, but uh, this would be one of the small areas where Arctic could maybe consider including three extension cables, but the problem is now you're affecting cost. This is something that not everyone needs, and so you get into the, the debate over just producing more waste for the sake of ticking another box on marketing uh, versus providing something that the majority of people want. And if the majority of people don't care about having individually uh, straight into the motherboard connectable cables and they prefer to just go through a single cable in the block, well, then it'd be a waste. You should just buy the cables yourself if you're one of the people who wants them. But that's something to consider additive to the price if you need the extra cables. EK solution is fully RGB enabled, has a lot of products are these days. We were not particularly fond of its uh, acrylic housing on the pump block. That's entirely subjective. If you like it, cool, whatever, go for it. But we thought it looked like something that we could have 3D printed in, in a shed in the backyard. So. Uh, whether or not you like the RGB deployment on this particular cooler, up to you. But either way, the Arctic cooler doesn't do LEDs at all. It's basically blackout. The shroud is uh, a sort of a, a Batman, Batmobile-esque shaped plastic. So we could definitely see where people wouldn't like the look of that. And in those instances, then, if you're not after just straight performance at the best pricing for the performance, you should get something else. But if you care more about just straight up performance, and value for the, the performance you're getting, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 is a good purchase. That said, the 280 has more or less all of the performance that the 360 has, and the pricing isn't that different between them. It's technically cheaper for the 280, but you should more or less buy the one that fits your case better. And that's all there is to it. It's not much to fight over in terms of thermal performance between the two. All the rest, the same stuff applies as in the original review, where the Liquid Freezer series is not going to be a chart topper if you're going for just absolute, uh, performance ignoring noise. But noise normalized or even with maxed out fans on this cooler, it is a chart leader in a lot of instances. It's definitely an efficiency leader in cooling. But if you want something that's more heavily enthusiast focused, you'd need to either buy some aftermarket fans or you start committing to something like a, an EVGA CLC 360, which is horribly inefficient for the performance you get at 100% fan speeds. But it does lead the chart. So there's that for people who have that use case in mind. We can recommend the Liquid Freezer 2 360. We'd favor the 280 over it. Just seems like the best value position, not much different in performance. If you want RGB, you do have to buy something else. The EK AIO is extremely competitive. This, along with the Arctic Cooler, both sort of showed that Asatex Rain is over and that it's sort of, uh, uh, it's extreme litigation approach to patents has forced innovation or at least bypasses in the rest of the industry. And those are now starting to surpass Ace Attack in straight up performance. So either one is, they're both the top performers right now and you should just you buy whatever is either uh, looks focused for your build or more in the budget. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Liquid Freezer 2 360 does fine. We think the 280 makes more sense in general, but the 360 certainly if it fits your case better, uh, we're fine with recommending it. And if you want something that's less performance focused, obviously go elsewhere. So that's it for this one. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly by buying things like our mod mats, our wireframe mouse mats, or shirts or other things. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for bonus episodes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.